you know this, but I watched a doco ages ago about lions and apparently they have a claw on the end of their tail like in the tuff at the end of their tail there's like an extra claw and what they showed was like as they're like hunting prey and like charging they flick themselves with their tail to to increase their adrenaline rush and they've got this like claw in their tail and they just like whack themselves masochistic well, self-flagellating I suppose I don't know lying on the hunt yeah but that surprised the fuck out of me <laughs> We train the big cats for like circuses and stuff. Um, oh they, yeah. They say, yeah, you know, the lions are easy because they're the social cats. So you use their, their whole, you engage yourself on their level, like saying with dogs. You know, they're pack animals, so yeah. So you take on the role as the leader. The tigers are completely independent bloody creatures, and of course they're bigger than lions too. And um, there's this uh, Because tigers aren't in packs, are they? No. They're, in, no, in fact, they're they, totally they, soft. Unless they're getting together for sex, and even sometimes then, they kill each other. Right. Um, they're very... And they need massive... They're not good at making friends. Not good at making friends at all. And they need massive independent roaming spaces. Like, you cover you cover this nation state, and I'll cover the right. other half of China or something. Okay. They're so far away. But um, there's this... Uh, uh, renowned uh, Russian tiger trainer that used to work in uh, the Moscow cir- Circus right. and he was like the world's <clears throat> authority on training tigers huh. and of course he's got the one arm and he's got the you know he's got the mechanical oh. arm on one side and, it's, it's uh, not his first rodeo and he said <laughs> you know I had all my techniques asked but at the end of the day it's a bloody tiger oh and, it's the same uh, like people that own monkeys <laughs> you know people that own chimpanzees that's, yeah, it turned on me after 15 years. They say it's when they go through adolescence. That's when they bite your face off. That's why they uh, don't do um, new episodes of Lancelot Link. <laughs> What's that one? What? Lancelot Link. Lancelot Link. Fucking 70s TV show with like detective chimps and villains and shit. What? Oh man, no wonder. <laughs> you don't know it, Detective Chimps. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, Chimp. It's 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 an acronym. So they're, and they're they're real real chimps, you know. Yeah, so it's like they use the genre of monkey it, movie, but in the TV. Totally, sort of thing. totally. You know, it all started with Tarzan. You know, yeah, Cheetah. Cheetah, Cheetah, wasn't it? Cheetah, yeah, chimpanzee. And then it went on from there. But in the seventies, it was um, they made a. It was like uh. It was actually a parody. Way, Lewis, you no, 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 it was before that. It was before that. Um, but it was a, a parody of, like, you know, Get Smart, but with chimps. And uh, and they used to give them peanut butter to to chew on. Oh, so then they could like do the, the voiceover. Like, like the Mr. Red. Mr. Yeah, Red yeah, Mr. Red. Yeah. Same. Yeah, well, he, was, he cut them. I can't believe you didn't see that. It's. Uh, that was huge back in the day. But, you know... There's only so many monkey things I can handle, guys. Dude, back in those days, they were pulling out orangutans. Yeah, there was one about a truck driver who had a chimp for a... Is that the Clint Eastwood one? No, that's the, that's um, any which way but lose. You're talking about the... Um, Bert... Uh, what's his name? Bert... Bert Reynolds. Bert Reynolds. No, not Bert Reynolds. Because he had a monkey movie. Did he? Yeah. I oh, probably yeah they yeah I don't know like they were making fucking you know monkeys were being mascots everywhere even uh, Ronald Reagan was in a monkey movie yes yeah, I know because I used it for a promo for my old film festival yeah he was golden age of Hollywood uh, <laughs> sorry, like B, probably not golden, golden age B grade uh, B grade yeah but yeah uh, Lancelot Link he was a detective and he had a band <laughs> of course because animals had bands in those days. You know, you couldn't be an animal and not be in a band. And, uh, Apart from Animal from the Muppets, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, that was another one. Banana Splits. Animal from the Muppets always preferred human women. 
True. He would chase him into the well, toilet. Well, special guests. Oh, man. Yeah, special guests. Yeah, that's And they'd true. just be like fleeing. Ah! And he's just there like... Yeah, Hounding yeah. them down like... Debbie Harry. Here. The Debbie Harry episode of The Muppets is pretty fucking good. So is the Linda Ronstadt one. That one's good. She's in a... She's singing Blue Bayou in a bayou. <laughs> He hasn't left the, the planet time. yet, has he? Shane McGowan? Yeah. I'm not sure if he was ever on the planet. No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. do, you ever, do, you ever, do you ever hear him laugh? Do you want to hear it? How, that, this, it this, features through it. Yeah. It, it is a this very is how, dis- this is, oh, 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 I can do, a, I can a, do a, 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 a Shane McGowan laugh. That's pretty much and, it. Yeah, yeah. And, he's, uh, and, and he's throughout, he's, he's interviewed and he's in his chair and he does it without moving a bit. So there's no, because it gets to the point where I think, you know, the nerves of that drug fried that they, oh. his face can't move, but the sound happens. So it's like, <sighs> so you try and work out whether he's asphyxiating, um, he's having a stroke, but then he realizes he's, he's laughing. But anyway, Shane McGowan's hanging out with Paul Simmons from The Clash. And he's taking the piss out of him for wearing clothes with lots of zips on them. <laughs> and he's like, you know, you, you and your fucking zips. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much his laugh is static. Yeah. I was on the train today and two young girls get on and sit across from me and they're very, I don't know, they're pretty young and they're kind of bogany, feral, kind of looking. Surfy bogan? No, not surfy at all. Just Anyway, this, this one chick, she's like sitting across from me and she's slouching like, like you know, she doesn't give a fuck. But she's, she's wearing this like midriff top and she's, you know, a little chubby. And um, she's showing off her belly button. The belly button's like this fucking big. But it was one of the largest belly buttons I've ever seen. Oh, the belly button itself. Itself was large. Yeah, I don't know if she should be showing... Innery. Yeah. Addery would be weirder. Like, she had a... Instead of a a normal, like, face mask on, she had, like, a red bandana. And she was kind of... I don't know, like, just full of attitude and shit. Like Chachi from Happy Days? I wouldn't give her that much credit. They were a certain breed. <laughs> These girls were a certain breed. View. Oh, a Bush Ranger mm-hmm. style. Yeah, yeah, like Bush Ranger. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, you know, I don't know. Ned Kelly. Not Billy the Kid or whatever, you know. Mm. But yeah, she had this like, mid-drift top on, showing off a belly button. And I was like, damn, it's that's a large belly button. Large umbilical cord. Yeah. Like a python. I didn't know much about Kirsten McCall until I saw a, a documentary on her and the way that she, she left the planet Jet was ski terrible. Or speedboat? She, she got run over by a boat and she was saving her children from it at the time she managed to push them out of the way and it ran over her and just oh, yeah poor girl you know lovely girl uh, mm. really good backing one of Billy Bragg's backing singers Billy Bragg the Pogues she had her own thing going on and she was Very she had easy. she had that voice of the that the mid to late 80s but oh man the way she left the planet mm, you know very heroic unfortunate and then it was like a, a fucking the boat belonged to a millionaire and he tried to cover it up and it went on and on and on and then they won the court case in the end after like fucking 10 years or something and um uh yeah it was a long sort of drawn out process but they they got you know justice in the end so i can only think of two uh two rock stars that died from being hit by a boat they got jeff buckley Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he just drowned. I thought he just like he yeah, walked well, into the Mississippi River and didn't come back. Yeah. Well, um, it's sort of like uh, he's that a romantic. You know, is, is, is was it suicide? Sort of. Well, how much do you want it to be suicide? That's the answer to the question. But um, yeah, no. There's some many claim that he was hit by a boat. And that was 
But it was more never, than likely, yeah. 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 But, you know, because he was at the height of his career, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, but that's you know, yeah. that's funny. You know, when I think of him, I think of a guy that lived in my house in Mount Lawley many years ago. I can't remember his name, but he was he was a really nice fellow. But he was an, like an upcoming singer songwriter, and he emulated cool. Jeff Buckley. He um. I got him a couple of gigs at the Heidi once, just like, you know, Tuesday nights or whatever. And, um, and you know, he, he, he was sitting on the stool and he got on stage. There was no fucking stage at the Heidi. It was just the floor. But anyway, he got up there and he put on a big giant pair of like Jackie O glasses and one of those stupid plastic colourful wigs... Not like and the ones you see at the Olympics. No, the ones you see at the Raw Show. Oh, like, yeah, really, okay. like, hard to describe, but ridiculous, obviously, obviously fake clown. Acry- acrylic cafe. You look like a you? fucking clown. And I'm looking at him going, what the fuck are you doing? And he was, like, singing these songs that he wrote, inspired by uh, Jeff Buckley. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing with the hat and glasses, mate, you know? Anyway, it was his... And he was studying psychology, so... In that case, obviously. Well, he was trying to work himself out. <laughs> and um, anyway, the so he's... The healer. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, he sung... sung oh, his songs weren't too bad, but they were, you, you'd listen to him and you go, you're obviously into fucking Jeff Barkley, you know. And so he, he, he sat there and pumped out, you know, half an hour of, this, of these songs. And afterwards... And then he declared himself as, I am the spectacle... And I'm like, oh man. Yeah, yeah, with that happened. Yeah, well, obviously, you know. And I was like, I live with this guy. No, well, he lives with me. And um, and uh, anyway, yeah, he, he kind of did that. And I was like, dude, lose the hat and the glasses. What's the fuck problem? And he's like, oh, I'm just not confident. I'm like, you look like a fucking idiot. Was he, was he trying to uh, use the persona to separate from no. the fear of... It was, a, it was just a dumb idea. I was like, what are you scared of? People are going to recognise you on the street. You're not even... Like, how fucking famous do you think you are, you know? And he was calling himself the, the spectacle. Sounding like Jeff Buckley with fucking sunglasses. Bobo the Clown. Robo, Bobo the Clown. Get up. Yeah, I don't know. He was a nice guy. But anyway, he came from Bombury. <laughs> struggle with uh uh you know gimmicks and or, or fashion or whatever but you know the the um like uh, one band i was in you know henry is like oh you're gonna have to dress up a bit more rich i'm like what do you want from me like uh you know yeah well it depends on happen. the band it doesn't apply to everything my last band like squash water you know we were kind of like the crazy country band with a banjo and um but it didn't make sense for us to wear, you know, like spurs, <laughs> chaps, asses, chaps, ass, chaps, ass, chaps. Ass, chaps. Ass, chaps, and no, spurs. No, that was one of the criteria. You couldn't be in the band unless you had asses, chaps. <laughs> Frankie goes to Hollywood. Oh, um, <laughs> whoa, Bronski bait. Relax. <laughs> Don't do it. But no, we all agreed that we didn't wear band t-shirts and we, we kind of, you know, sort of wore suitable clothing. And I also think that at some stage, like band t-shirts kind of... Dis- so when you say band t-shirts, you mean like... What the so fuck do you think of, I mean when I say band well, t-shirts? Well, of their band or another person's well, any, band? Anything, anything like, you know, or even just a, a t-shirt with a vibrant kind of eye-catching logo kind of tends to distract people from... The muso, you know, and and it's like who who gives a fuck? What are you flying like Faith No More's flag for, or whatever? You know, who cares? Okay. Unless you're Iron Maiden, you just wear your own band's t-shirt on stage. But I let them off because they're fucking possessed men of rock and roll. <laughs> Uh, and Have you 
been to Kew before? No, I haven't been One to One thing to look out for, hopefully it still exists, it existed 20 years ago. Okay. The pub there yeah. has cowboy doors, you know, like the wooden ones. Saloon. Like, the West, the like saloon, a saloon. Western thing. Wow. Because, I mean, it's you know, northern gold fields town but anyway like that's one cool thing and then of course uh yeah, i remember going there years ago uh american girl megan and hot chicken we walked in there and it's just no women at all no. and every, everyone just turned around it was oh and it was like the like the western movies when like you walk in and then all the conversation stops oh yeah yeah, yeah. and everyone's just staring at you and you're just like oh don't stop on my account, people. You know, can't I always imagine that's what it was like when David Bowie made his video in Kalgoorlie for Let's Dance. Oh, was it there? Where? Yeah. I assumed it would have been like Mad Max and every other no. uh, film. It would be uh, Broken Hill. He, he made a comment. He said he, he went up there. He wanted to engage with... In that video, there's um, there's a, an Aboriginal couple that, that are feature in that video. But he's playing in one of the pubs. And there's just like, you know, toothless old Aussies with melted noses and red big fat noses and shit. And the guts up on the bar. The guts the rest and shit. And, and there's Bowie. He doesn't look very pleased to be there, I must say. And well, he came up against I, some racism and stuff. You know. Well, one thing I noticed about Bowie is he had a disdain for unattractive people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's the Pixies documentary, I think, and there's people talking about the Pixies and there's Bowie saying that the Pixies had the greatest of all rock and roll people, the highest uh, musical talent to uh, physical attractiveness ratio. <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah, you look at, um, was it Joey Santiago or whatever? You yeah, know, yeah, Joe Santiago. Ugly as fuck, you know, he's all fat. Oh, and then you look I at Tim Deal with a big ass and uh, <laughs> like, Bowie, dude. What? Dude, you got to well, play nice. Was, yeah, well, he can talk. I mean, he wasn't the most attractive guy before he got his fucking teeth done. He had like early Bowie, you look at his teeth, they're fucking jagged great, and shit. Great book of British smiles. Yeah, pretty much. And then he got his teeth done. He was just fucking smiling all the time. You know? And then he got the zest, you know. Exactly. Yeah, I'm an attractive person. Yeah. Same with like John Lydon, you know, John Rotten. Uh, he was he was called Rotten because of his fucking teeth, you know. And he admits like oh, he grew okay. up, he never grew up with a toothbrush. And uh, and then uh, I saw an interview with him like late, a lot later on in his life, and he had a brand new set of teeth, and he's like cost me about fifty grand. <laughs> I'll be like. That he said he day. had cysts and tumors and all sorts of shit going on in his jaw, you know. But he's sort of looking at his complexion didn't look like he had the most veggies in his diet no uh, no 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 i mean yeah not know, it's like, of course yeah well they all yeah they all grew up poor you know i think you could obtain broccoli in shepherd's bush if you looked hard enough or well if you felt like it end. yeah but it was all about lard or something wasn't it oh yeah you deep dripping, fried in lard dripping like the fish and chips yeah but I was surprised to hear that, like, he'd been with the same partner for over 30 years. Like, he'd, he'd met her at a gig, at a really early Pistols gig, and that's it. Partner for life. I didn't really know. Keeps it real private, you know? Um, but I was like, how'd she get around the teeth thing? <laughs> how'd she get around the, the cysts and the, you know, the tumours and the gob, you know? Mm. Now, Neil Young had the same uh, right. life a very long time. Right. Very long time. He's one of the, you know, uh, pointers of rock and roll fidelity. Totally. With his, uh, he's got had a bunch, well, ha to this day, has a bunch of kids uh, with um, cerebral palsy. And, um, oh. But, of course, he, uh, he he left his missus for Harold Danner. Sorry, Daryl Hannah. <laughs> Harold Danner? <laughs> one beer too many. <laughs> Daryl Hannah's cousin. Yep. <laughs> From Jero and um... 